Ryan Ross here with another banger video. Today, we're playing with electricity. This is a poor man's foot pedal for a TIG torch. Um, it's a high frequency start. If you are a broke person and can't buy a uh, TIG machine with high frequency start. So let's uh, just get into the basics. What is a high frequency start? Basically, a high frequency start in easy terms is basically where your your tick torch and your workpiece there will be or your tungsten and your workpiece there will be when you press your foot on the pedal a little bit of a spark that creates the arc and you can be separated from your piece or hovering over your piece and when you put, push the foot pedal It'll create a little tiny spark that will jump the gap to your tungsten, to your workpiece, and start that arc. So there's there's high frequency start, there's touch or lift this, there's lift to start, and there's scratch to start. Lift to start is exactly how it sounds. You touch the piece and you pull away and it starts your arc. Scratch to start is just like stick welding but with your TIG torch. You scratch your piece with tungsten really lightly and it'll start that arc. Sometimes you stick a lot with that way and with the lift to start you stick that stick a lot with that too as, as well. High frequency you're hovering over the piece so you never get to you never your tungsten never sticks in which is nice. So I didn't want to buy a welder that had high frequency because usually they cost more. So I built my own. And this looks pretty crazy or complicated, but it's really simple. So you got a battery, you got a generator. This thing right here, that's that's a key to, it's basically a, a kill switch. Pull this to kill the power in the system instead of pulling the battery. Um, so you have the kill switch, which you don't need, but you do need underneath this little piece of wood, there's a button, tiny little button that when I push this wood in, it creates the power from the battery, it pushes into the generator, then comes out through these wires. At the end of the wires, I have a clamp. The clamp goes to your workpiece. The other end of the wire, or the light wire, goes to my TIG torch. Inside of here, this wire is, there is a gap. So you don't wanna go directly on your TIG torch. So when you're doing this, you have to have a gap. And if you don't, you could possibly short your welder. So use this at your discretion. I am warning you that you could possibly blow fuses in your amp or your MOSFETs in your amp and fry your chips. So use it with caution. When you're first doing this, you're gonna wanna unplug your torch playing around with it because if you do this and you're playing around with it and it sticks on the copper and there's no gap in between your rod in here and this, you can short this out. So I recommend pulling your cable off just to get it prepped and all that. Um, and then when you're gonna use it, make sure this thing has power, it's on, because I figured out that when you use it without any power going out, you can fry the chip. So I've already fried one before, learning the process, so learn from my mistakes. So basically I'll show you exactly what I have on this and what everything is. So we got an 18650 battery, right? So this is a little, little holder. It holds your battery, an 18650, it's on top. This is what the magic happens with this bad boy. This is a high frequent, or this is a high voltage generator. This produces 400 milliwatts, I believe is what it is. So basically, in a nutshell, this is a little taser. 
You can get these bad boys actually surprisingly off Amazon or eBay. I got like five of them or something like that. Seven for seven of them, I think, for like ten bucks. Um, this this is a I believe it input uh, three point seven volts. It's what an eighteen six fifty is rated at. So when you came up with this idea because, in theory, all high frequency start is is like that tiny little spark that will gap your tungsten to your workpiece. So I thought of other things such as a grill starter, the little red button on your grill, I and mean, pro propane gas grills, you have the little red button that you press that start, starts to flame, or, or your stove top. When you start a gas stove, you'll hear that, that spark. Basically, that's the same thing as something like this. This is a little bit more intense, obviously, but it's the same idea. You just need that little spark to jump so you can start an arc or a flame in that case. And so, how I have this room here. So you got your power. I don't know if you can see this, but like I said, battery, then in between your power that's going out from your battery, I have a little switch underneath here, okay? That switch, when I press this in, powers the generator. So you got your red wire going in directly or your negative directly to your high generator. You splice that, put a switch in. You don't need a kill switch. I did that just because it's safer to handle. Um, you can also, you put that before the switch if you're gonna do the kill switch. But let's take that out, just the switch. And then these leads, this looks complicated. This I was playing around with. It recommends that you have a parallel arc in between these because these are meant to actually make you know voltage jump like that and if you don't if it's connecting and you know closes the circuit right there supposedly you can fry these i haven't fried one um i haven't uh, you will get back feedback or static electricity and you can hear things around it kind of like you know your hair kind of pulling towards it so it's a little scary when you do that you'd rather have the arc Gapping. So, get back to it. So then, you got those red wires that you saw from the spark gapping connected to these longer wires, okay? So all I did was basically extend these red, big red wires into these cables to make it, you know, like an extension to these. And then on one end, I put a clamp that goes to your workpiece, okay? That goes to your workpiece or directly on your workpiece or if you have a steel table like I do, just clamp it on there like where you would ground normally. Um, and the other, one of the other ends is directly hooked up, not directly, but hooked up into my TIG torch. I have it basically a tiny screw that I cut down that I screwed into the side of this and there is a gap between the screw and the rod, the copper rod in here. Because if you have it connected, directly connected, for some reason, that feedback goes directly back into your machine and it grounds out or dissipates somehow back into your machine. So for some reason, you need that gap. For some odd reason. I don't know why. I'm not an you know, electrical engineer here. But, or I didn't build this either, so don't know what's inside that causing that. But like I said, make sure you have power when you're doing this or else that feedback will go in and kill your MOSFETs in there. So let's uh, hook this bad boy up. Kill switch is off right now. 
there's no power going to it. But I guess I can show you quick. If you can see it. Tiny little spark when I get near it. I have, I do have a gap here. Like I said, I was playing around with it. So basically, I, I'm gapping it in series. All I'm saying when I say I'm gapping it in series is one wire is going directly to the TIG torch, like I have it, and the other goes to that clamp. But in between, I cut it, put put one end to a screw and another, the other end to another screw, put it really close together so it creates, you know, that gap, you'll see. For some reason, obviously, it dissipates the energy a little bit more, so less comes out of here. And that's good. You don't want a huge, you don't need a huge spark. You just need a spark to jump to create arc. So like I said, it's a full pedal, so it's on the ground. Nothing magical you're missing on the ground, it's just on the ground. So, turn it on. Go to your work piece. You hear that? It's sparking in there, because there's a gap. See how that works? I didn't, you didn't see me scratch, you didn't see me lift the start. This, it's just a regular Deco Pro welder. It's a $115 stick welder off the internet with high frequency start. See how that works? I don't know if you can see that that good, but I was rudely interrupted by my wife. Just kidding. Yeah, high frequency start with this bad boy. Connected directly. So you see I have two clamps, like I said, ground to the torch, gapping on the torch. I'll do a demonstration of a scratch to start and then high frequency start. Pretty big difference. The foot pedal, when you undo it or take your foot off the pedal, it doesn't obviously stop your arc, so it's not like if you bought a welder that had built-in high frequency, because that take your foot off the pedal, usually that's your foot control, you turn it off your arc. You still gotta snap away and hold your gas there, but again, not a perfect science, it's a poor man's switch, or a poor man's foot pedal. So there it is guys, that is a high frequency start or a poor man's foot pedal in a nutshell. That's how you make one. If you saw it, saw me do it with this little $115 inverter from Deco Pro. Um, it's pretty sweet. I don't typically use this anymore. I do have another machine that has a lift to start, which is just a little bit more convenient right now because I'm lazy of hooking things up. Um, but it is possible to make one. And this one was for, I don't know, fucking six bucks or something to make. Everything else I had, it didn't have a high voltage generator, of course, but buy that off of Amazon or eBay. Um, everything else I pretty much had. I had the battery holders for the 18650 and the 18650. 
But if you want to do that, I mean, it's possible. And there it is. My name is Ryan Ross. Smash that like button, subscribe, and come back for the future videos. Thank you. Later.